I think it worth exploring the Volcano 2 user interface first, so we get an idea of where things are prior to us reverse engineering a preset to see how the filtered and modulated effect was produced. To the uninitiated, Volcano 2 is an unusual but very powerful modulation and filtering plugin that can take your audience either on a subtle frequency altering and expanding manipulation or to extreme sonic mayhem. Essentially, the process works like this. The audio signal gets filtered and then modulated, and you can use up to four independently controlled filters before being modulated by FabFilter's drag and drop or click and point visual system that is also seen in other FabFilter plugins too. Okay, so let's look at the user interface now. I've got it here open in the expanded or wide view accessed by choosing appropriately at the bottom right hand corner. Additionally, even though empty at present, the modulation area across the lower third is expanded too. As usual, we access presets, the A and B options, as well as undo and redo and help across the top. Moving down, we have the interactive filter display area that contains the filter controls with the aforementioned modulation button centrally positioned just below. Within the modulation area, we see the source selection bar. And then below that are the modulation slots and modulation sources area, which will be populated later as we look at a preset or two. And then right across the foot, we see MIDI learn, monitoring and input and output and mix parameters. When you use Volcano 2, you'll notice that it makes use of an expanding or collapsing user interface, dependent on what particular parameter is active. You'll probably know by now that this functionality is prevalent in many FabFilter plugins and makes focusing in on specific tasks at hand so much easier. There are four multi-mode stereo filters available and each can make use of low, high or bandpass options to focus the filter on a particular user-defined frequency area. And you can choose between three slopes, 12, 24 and 48 dB per octave and you can choose from up to 11 distinct filter characteristics. You would just click here to access any of the available characteristics. Now, once you select a filter, and in this example, we only have one at present, but once you do, you activate, or call into focus, all the linked operations for that one filter alone. You can make changes to this, and if creating further filters, they are independent to those further created ones. You'll know which is active because it illuminates, and we'll see an extra ring surrounding the number. Bypassing the filter, rather than removing it completely, is achieved simply by selecting it again. You'll still be able to adjust the filter's parameters, it's just that you won't hear the effect this has on the signal until you activate by clicking again. To increase the filter count, click the plus button that will be adjacent to the last filter. Now as I've said, you can create up to four filters and each is distinct. To remove filters, simply click on the remove cross there at the top right of each filter area. I'll take it back to just one solitary filter for the moment. Now let's look at the settings in a little more detail. This first dial is the frequency dial, well the inner component is anyway, and it enables you to set the cutoff or center frequency of the filter that you've got selected. And as alluded to, the outer dial is the pan parameter, and this allows you to independently filter the left or right channel of your signal. Once you have set your center or cutoff frequency with the inner dial, you'll effectively balance the filtered stereo image using the outer pan dial. As you rotate the pan dial anticlockwise or to the left, the left channel gets filtered with a lower center frequency, and by antithesis, the right channel gets a higher center frequency filtering. Moving along, we see the peak dial. This affects the signal's resonance. If you increase the peak slightly, you'll generate a warmer or coloured filtered sound. We've already seen the 11 characteristic options that textually indicate what they'll add to the signal. For example, there's smooth or raw or hard or gentle, etc. And underneath, we can set the response to focus the filtered range dependent on whether we choose to filter by low pass, high pass or band pass mode. To try and explain this, note first of all what your cutoff or centre frequency is set at. In this case, it's set here, and if we choose the high pass response, it will mean that all the frequencies prevalent within the signal that are above the cutoff point set, then they will be allowed to pass through the filter to be filtered and then modulated if desired. By contrast, if set to low pass, then only frequencies below the center frequency get the processing applied. 
choosing bandpass processes frequencies around the cutoff point set here. Now how many frequencies either side will depend on the slope setting chosen here, and you can choose between 12, 24 and 48 dB an octave. Finally, we have this delay dial that determines by how much the signal will be delayed as it moves through each filter. When multiple filters are set up, having some delayed will generate more esoteric sounds. So, that's how we adjust individual parameters for each filter. But you can also adjust by selecting and dragging a filter point here too. And this comes into its own if you have multiple filters set up and activated. Now to be able to link multiple filters together, first of all, move over the filter point here to which you want to link, and in our case to filter point number 2, then as you roll above it, you'll see that link button appear. Once you select it, both bands in this case are linked, and consequently, you can now adjust them simultaneously by clicking and dragging around the newly created link button between the two filter numbers up here. And then of course to remove the link, just select it again down here to break the chain and now they move independently once more. Another important aspect to your sound is routing. Volcano 2 allows you to route any or all of the four filters to different routing configurations, stereo, left and right, and mid and side. Once you select this main routing button, the routing options are made available to adjust, and as I say there are three main routing configurations, stereo, left and right, and mid and side. Choosing stereo means that the signal's left and right channels get processed with all the filters, and left and right equally. By contrast, but still working with left and right channels, choosing the left stroke right option means that each channel gets independently sent to different filters. In our example here of having two filters set up and active, the left channel will be routed to filter number one only, whilst filter number two receives the right channel only. Choosing the mid-side option will create more involved routing, in that the audio becomes split into, you guessed it, a mid and a side channel. Now I'm going to leave it here for now, now that we've studied all the options above the modulation line, and we'll look at the modulation options next, prior to untangling a preset.